Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're doing our Snow Stomper Guide. Now, once again, with all these, I'm going to look at some endgame resources for you guys to go for once we get Mythic Plus characters, where there becomes more of a quote-unquote meta. But then I want to spend longer going through progression when you don't have every character at Mythic Plus and some options you have to try and maximize your damage, which also depends on what stage of a boss you're at, whether you're trying to get to 20% or whether you're trying to push from 80 to 100. It does vary. So we're going to go through all that stuff. So first of all, let's go through, let's give shout outs to the website. First of all, we have Vatra over here with his website uh, where he has a bunch of endgame formulated stuff from a lot of testing. Then we have Analytica as well and they have now posted uh, this infographic with all the characters on their website. So you can go ahead and you can find all this stuff. I'll have links to all these in the description. And then we have Pridewin uh, and Pridewin are fantastic at giving you deep write-ins into every character, their possible options and stuff like that for some more options for you to look into depending on where your account's at. But these two are more of the endgame focused thing. So quickly, let's look at some the end game meta teams so these teams you need mythic plus characters essentially corin you need mythic plus cassidy needs mythic plus uh we've got merrily needs mythic plus and rainy needs mythic plus cassidy's in here she is the one that we've seen but she is just a good general buffing type unit uh at mythic plus she can put her blessing onto allies with the wave and then she deals extra damage which is like a snowballing type effect uh then over here in this one and you'll see that cassidy normally use the fireball uh when you're using her over here we're using haste uh, and this one's going to be the Kruger. Once again, this will need an invested Kruger to be able to survive. Uh, and then very similar, uh, Shakir's actually a decent one. Shakir's nice. At, and if you have a Shakir and you're trying to progress through, definitely a unit that you can test out. I tested mine out. He didn't quite have enough for me. Um, he just died too quickly. But in general, if you have him decent or you're not struggling on the boss, like I'm only reaching 40%, he could definitely be an option there for you. Now, as we move on, we've also got some tech usage of Temesia over here in this one. Uh, and then we look at the non-cell hypo teams. Let's just remove my face for a second, have a look. Uh, so this is more standard stuff. You got Thorin, you got Odie. This one does have Shakir still. Um, and then you got the, the Kruger for the, the Shred. And then you got Meryl Lee, once again, needing Mythic Plus. Uh, and then this one over here, using the Temesia instead of the um, instead of the Thorin, and then using uh, Corrin instead of the Shakir. So that's kind of the stuff we're looking at. Keep in mind, some of these, they do and if you want to experiment with more damage based teams you might get away with using the healing artifact to try and keep your team alive and that is definitely something to consider okay so now let's go look back at the boss and talk about a few things so when we take a look at what he has um this one th this one he freezes an enemy one of one of your units and so you really need to break the snow before you can continue attacking and when you jump into a fresh difficulty like this snow is just impossible to break so just just know this snow is like a frustrating thing but that is a core mechanic behind it um this is the other main mechanic that we look at which is periodically silencing all enemies now this may make you think that smoky is trash in this boss but smoky in low range damage like when you're trying to push like 30 40 percent smoky is still actually a fantastic unit because in in between the silences, Smokey can get back into casting and then cast the ultimate, top everyone off, and then keep going. And then Smokey, for a lot of people, also enables to you to keep the faction bonus. I still get better results using a Smokey than I do with something like a Hewan, because we also keep that, that faction bonus. And he actually reliably controls his healing when you actually need it, which isn't too bad. So Smokey's still decent. Um, lose HP over time. This is just like standard stuff. Not too stressed on single target attack. Uh, attacks and knock down uh, the enemy with the highest HP ratio. So this one, this one can get you in trouble a little bit sometimes. Um, and it deals multiple damages to enemies within a radius of an arc. Now, this is the other important one. Like the two important are his ult where he freezes someone, his AoE silence where he silences everyone, and then this one where he deals damage to melee units. And that's what I want to look at when we jump in here. Because if we jump in and look at my best damage, team uh it is this team here at the moment now like i said i my best damage is 40 percent if i was trying to stretch it and i'm like my best damage currently was 80 percent with this team then my next point of call would be to drop smoky and put kruger in but because of where i'm at at the moment that aoe breath that the boss does one shots my kruger my kruger just insta dies to it so kruger can only get one stack up with that like he can only get so his defense shred for those that just know kruger debuffs but don't know how he works he has a he has a death shred that can stack up to four times his like initial attack does one and then his ultimate does three so 
it's not only his initial attack. He will repeatedly use it, but he's probably going to use his ultimate before he uses it for a second time. So as long as you can get him to an ultimate, you have the full stacks on. And in my team at the moment, and I will show you guys this in a minute, he cannot get those full stacks. So I prefer to keep my team alive using Smokey because I'm in that early damage range. So early damage range, you're looking at something like this for progression. For most people's account who have invested into Cecilia and Odie, if you have something else invested for damage, feel free to slap them in. But you're looking at something like this for early progression, uh, like, you know aiming for 10 to 50 percent and once you're starting getting towards that 70 80 90 100 percent on trying to clear him that is when i would drop him and i would put uh, the kruger in because now you're going to get that more damage throughput and by that stage once you're aiming for that your kruger's probably like level 120 would mine would be and he can do it now i did experiment with making kruger my level 120 and to see a 110 i just didn't have the damage output so it wasn't worth it in the end so that is just something to consider. Now, as we move on, like I said, this was my personal best team uh, using the Smokey. I still find Smokey to be the best for this position just because he actually reliably heals well. And I will show you a fight where he does that so I can demonstrate that. And I will also show you for the Smokeyless people a run without him where we run Kruger. Now, if you don't have Thorin, you could run any other tank, but the tanks just aren't going to give the amplification that Thorin does, unfortunately. It's just, it just is what it is. Thorin's just a great tank when you need a tank in boss. However, if you have a highly invested Kruger, he can also act as your tank, and then you can put an extra unit in there as well. Just depends on where you're at, but most people won't have a highly invested Kruger, I'm thinking, because they're going for copies of Odie and Coco. Now, Coco is fantastic for this one um, because she can, because you are going more, more damage focused in this one, running the double main DPS, uh, and so she allows them to really heal up a lot and amplifies that damage, and so she plays that sustain role well. But like I said, early on, you do need the second healer. Um, so when we look at it, what I want to show you guys is one other thing. If you're like just getting into a new difficulty of a boss um, and you're just trying to get a bit of damage, you can use this one because this makes your back unit immune to the silence. So if I have my Cecilia as my back position unit, she will actually get uh, Mr. Carlisle out before she gets frozen by his um, attack because you, you immune when you have this artifact on you immune the silence but you don't immune the freeze so Cecilia will do the most damage she'll get Mr. Carlisle out then she'll get frozen then I'll have Mr. Carlisle to help break the thing however on the flip side if you're just into a new boss and you're trying to get 10% damage say and like that's all you're trying to get because you're like getting killed at like 4% you can actually put Odie as the back row and then Odie will get his poison off before the boss starts freezing and that poison tick can often be enough to get you across the line for 10% but those are some niche things that you can look at doing there like I said at the moment I'm using this one it's just working out the best for me so I want to show you these two teams so first of all we'll do the Kruger team and I'll show you guys how this one works. So once again, I just want to demonstrate that Kruger can be fantastic, but if he's getting one tapped by the first breath, then he ain't that great. So let's just go ahead and show you guys here. So let's jump in. Let's do a run here and we'll take a look. Uh, two times speed, please. So Kruger got one stack on. Oh, wait, he actually lived this time. Oh, dude, my Kruger never lives. Oh, no, he didn't get the ult off on the boss. Okay, if Kruger doesn't die here... Okay, Kruger stocks down. <laughs> like I said, if he got the ult off, we would have been good. Or if he actually went and attacked the snowball uh, a bit earlier, we would have been good. But we only got one stack of the death shred. So that it's just it's just really undervalued on the actual throughput that we're getting out of Kruger for that um, because we didn't get that value out of it. So here you'll see Mr. Carlisle, unfortunately, and everything in this fight just doesn't RNG well for me. Carlisle dies, which means we don't get that extra damage. And as you can see, this team, it just struggles from not dealing with the boss at that overpowered level. So I need to play more def defensively because I'm just taking too much damage. And that's essentially what we're looking at there. So once again, that is where I switch into the team of running the Smokey because I want to show you guys how Smokey works. And I know for people without Smokey, it sucks. But if it, essentially, I would just be running that Kruger team or you can experiment with other things. You can experiment with things like Shakir. Problem is, Shakir at low investment has that same issue where he gets clapped by the breath. Also, for me, I feel like I could do a decent Shakir run, um, but I'd have a really bad rogue weapon, uh, assassin weapon. So like, it's just not even worth it because his damage isn't there because I've invested mainly into my rangers first and then supports and tanks. So my, 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 uh, my assassins just don't have the gear to be able to contribute to these teams at the moment because I'm optimizing for every bit of progression and I never really use assassins at the moment. So let's go in and I'll show you this team and how this team works. So let's jump in. 
And you'll see Smokey starts healing. It doesn't really matter too much. We're just going to get there. You can see we don't have issues with having a Kruger that's going to get tapped. I also did try this with a Kruger and no, um, with Kruger instead of Coco. And that, once again, it didn't work either because Kruger just dies too quickly and we actually get more throughput from this team. So there we go. We've got the snowball down. Now we get Mr. Carlisle out. Now you can see we just got knocked down with the Smokey. So Smokey is going to recover just before the boss summons it. And there you go. We get the ult, we get the healing, and then we get silenced. But that burst heal was exactly what we need and as you can see we got carlisle unfortunately carlisle took the long path to that one uh and now i i have tried different spacings of characters as well unfortunately we lost cecia there now if cecia had have survived which is what happened in my last run that's how we're going to get a little bit higher scores but unfortunately she did die uh and then we're going to freeze smoky and now we're kind of boned but at the end of the day i'm still going to get that 40 percent, and that's sort of roughly where i'm at with my team you can see we've got two seconds left one second and that is it so that's a look at the way the team works works in that aspect now you saw there how mr carlisle took a wide berth that's something else you want to consider when pu putting your teams together for this one you kind of want everyone to be close to him so it's less distance for your melee units to run to go ahead and destroy the um thing uh, and so I, you could do something like I could actually do it like this and this would probably be better formation um, just because this actually I'm stupidly how did I not think of this when I was doing my formation we're going to try this I think this one could actually be better because then my Mr. Carlisle has a more direct path to accessing uh, my Cecilia what caught me out was I often was using this one and so that then I needed to see it in the back row position. So let's go ahead and do this because this is another important thing. When you're not using the back row position one, you can actually put the unit that's going to get frozen uh, closer forward, which allows early access. And I think that might be the difference in my Cecilia surviving where she previously died on that second ice block because she gets carlisle to assist in that breaking of the ice block so let's go ahead and see what happens here uh yes okay she gets down so we're going to get a pretty early heal here from smoky and we're going to get pretty well topped off uh we do get that coco buff into the carlisle which is fantastic there's the top off and now carlisle is straight onto it and you can see carlisle is going to be alive even as we complete this down so now we're in a much better position we're still 36 uh, seconds left and okay carlisle's down we lost one life there coco hopefully coco can get the ult off before the silence yes we do we which is perfect. Uh, so now we have a buffed Carlisle coming in there to kill that. We got 17 seconds left. We got Odie still surviving. Odie's going to go ahead and use an ult here. We got nine seconds left. And as you can see, this is a much better formation. Unfortunately, that freeze comes before we could get another ult. We got our best with 45.45. But once again, it's not a crazy difference on what we did. And that is kind of the best situation I can reach. We actually got to rank number four with that one. But that is sort of like the optimal team for this stage of the battle. Now, once again, if I come back to this one next time around and say my whole roster is at level 120 and I'm trying to beat it and maybe I'm getting 80% looking for that 100% clear that is when I can definitely drop her and I can put someone like Kruger in. Now, the, the other thing that I, I, I have tried experimenting with, but I couldn't get it to work, uh, is this with Kruger. Now, if somehow the timing does work, uh, it would be fantastic if you can box Kruger out. If you have maybe a unit that moves uh, slightly after battle, um, who am I thinking of? Like, like Val, uh, uh, no, Merrily does it. So if you get a unit that can box him in and then he has to move, yes. But otherwise, I tried the, the pathing thing, but this still didn't work the idea because the the thorin moves forward i tried that idea to try and get him to uh miss the first breath so that he could go and the other problem is that he takes too long to run away oh we actually got him to live through this oh interesting okay and this is where just silly little formation differences can make a big difference if he can ult here okay now we got max stacks on that so let's see what we can do oh wait unfortunately this team dude i, do, I don't have the coco in this team uh but let's let's see how this goes this is with no coco but with kruger who actually got max stacks of the defense shred let's see and once again there we go we don't have carlisle up either for this and this is where we're going to get boned because we just don't have the damage throughput to actually get through this ice block and that's where we get screwed but you can play around with different things if you want to but once again it's, it's just there's a lot of little bits of rng that you can mess around with but once again just recapping my best team currently in this early phase is going to be let's go over here my best team in the early phase for me personally uh was this with coco and then in the later phase, you can drop the Smokey and you can run the um, the Kruger and that can work definitely well. But that is going to be for this one, guys. Don't forget to check out those resources. I'll leave them in the description and the pinned comment. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.